Shalom, I hope you can hear me. Giving all praise to Yahweh by Shemel Shabbat Shemel Kakodash. And I'm going to entitle this video. This is going to be like a series. This is going to be a super short video. We may come back in a couple of minutes or maybe another hour or so or the next day or with a different subject. But I want to try to make this a series. And I'm going to call this series or the title of this video at least. Let's see where the spirit takes me if I make it a series. The title is um, Vocab Malone is wrong on this. Simple enough. So this would be a hopefully a series. Hopefully some of you brothers, you know, jump on the bandwagon. But I'm watching this video that was put up three hours ago with this blockhead over here. The vocab Malone, how does a smart Christian witness to a Hebrew Israelite? Well, you're gonna you're doing that in vain. You might as well talk to Buddhists or atheists or other people because it's not gonna work. You can witness until it until the cows come home. You can witness to us until you're blue in the face. You're not gonna so you're not gonna turn them stir the minds or change the minds of any real Israelites, the real, the real ones, as opposed to the, you know, the, the lukewarm ones, the, the, you're not going to, you're not going to sway the mind of GMS. That's for damn sure. I, U I C I C P K, uh, <clears throat> Sakari, <clears throat> just to name a few, just to name a few. Cause even if you was right, which you're not, but let's say you're right. Let's say everything that you say is, is right. We're not gonna listen to you any damn way because you're an Edomite, but you're not right. And <clears throat> this is a statement, this is a statement that he made. I'm not gonna, gonna even play it. Just go to uh, 232, I'm sorry, yeah, two, two minutes and 32 seconds in. And he says, Matter of fact, let me let me let you let me let, let you listen to it because <clears throat> it's a short sound bite. So listen up, listen up, listen up. And we believe that. And if you go back, maybe another 10 seconds, 20 seconds, it speaks about the Trinity and the way you broke it down. Matter of fact, let's go to that. Let's go to that. Let me see. Let me go right here. Two, two minutes and 29 seconds in. Of course we believe that. The way you broke it down, is, that's exactly how I believe it. Let me play that again. distinct yet co-equal we believe that but there's an order there's an order in the matter you don't pray you don't pray pray to Yahweh to get to Yahweh Shai you don't pray to the Holy Spirit to get to Yahweh Shai or Yahweh you you pray um in the name of Yahweh Shai to get to the Father you just can't go directly to the Father that's uh Saint John 14 and 6 there's an order. You have the Father, you have the Son, and you have the Holy Spirit. Let's listen to that again. They're not co- 
co-equal because the Father has the say. The Lord said, um, I'm not going to go to the precept. You can put it in the description, whatever. He said in uh, St. John 4, he said, my meat is to do the will of him. He told the disciples that. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Is that equal? Basically, he was on a mission from the Father. He told the Father on the cross, Eli, Eli, you know the rest of the story. What he said was, Eli, Eli, he said, Allah, ya, Allah, ya, my God, my God. He goes on to say, why has thou forsaken me? Now, if they're equal, why would he say that? Why wouldn't he say, yes, I'm on the cross right now. I'm catching a lot of hell. But me, that Father, and the Holy Spirit, we came up with this, and we all decided to do this. He feels rejected. So what the hell are you talking about, vocab? There's an order. You cannot, you cannot go, you cannot come to the Lord. Uh, what is that? Uh, St. John 6, 43, 44 verse. I'm not going to go to it. It says, you cannot come to me except the Father. Draw him. He's, he's drawn in the Father. It's the, reaction, the, the action of the Father that puts the spirit on you to, to be drawn to the Messiah. Uh, St. John, uh, what is that? I just had it in my mind. I just said it. 14 and 6. I believe it's the 6th verse. He says, um, no, man, no man can come. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read that. Let me go ahead and read that. Where am I? Okay, you come over here. John fourteen. Yahweh Shai, or Jesus, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you just can't go directly to the Father. When, when we say the prayers in Hebrew, we say Yahweh Bahasham, in the name of Yahweh Shai. It says in St. John. What is that? Six. Um, uh, the key point is right here. Well, let me go right to the point. Forty-four verse. No man can come to me except the Father, a different entity, which hath sent me. Did the Lord send himself? Could the Lord have said, no, Father, you going to go. And me, the Son, I'm going to save you. No. Father, the Father, the Heavenly Father, as the Christians say, Father God, that's number one. The Lord, that's number two, and the Holy Spirit. So you can get an understanding in your mind to put a picture in your mind what the Holy Spirit is. It's the angels. So you can so you can get a picture in your mind. Like I said, why did he say uh Eli Eli? Why did he say, Aliyah, Aliyah, my power, my, my God, my God, why is thou forsaken me? Why did he say that? If he's co-equal with the Most High. He said, and I, like I said in John 4, I, my will is to do the will of him. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me to finish his work. 
Had he not finished his work, he would have failed. And he would have had, had to answer a higher power, which is the Heavenly Father. And it was the Father that rose him. It was the Father that said, this is my beloved Son in whom, whom I am well pleased. Not the other way around. So now let's come back over here. Let's listen to some more. Trinity, Trinity is their word. It just means it just means three or three and one. We don't use the word Trinity, Trinity, but we know that they are three and one, meaning you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three distinct person personages, entities, powers, gods, but not co-equal. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's listen to some more. They don't believe that. And that's because most teachers like to believe that Jesus Christ was a created being. And most of them do not believe the Holy Spirit is an individual person, a distinct person in the universe. Now, when we say person, we don't mean human. We're not saying the Holy Spirit's a human. I mean, Jesus was incarnated. Person is a way to identify a distinct personality. Now, Tao. Right, and it's not one thing. It's not one ent entity. Like I said, the best way to understand the Holy Spirit, to get put a picture in your mind, is the angels. Because certain angels come to certain prophets and certain men and women in the form of, a, uh, they can come in the form of an actual person. They can embody an actual person. They can come in the form of a dream which is something in your mind that you sleep on and, and you wake up wondering whether it's, it was just a dream or a vision. And then sometimes they come as a vision. Daniel, when he saw the, 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 the beast, angels, what, what angels did was transform themselves into these beasts. A better, a better picture is, a, is you're in a, a movie theater or you're in a holog holographic uh, movie. So you're in the movie, like the Star Trek series. They were going to a room, and uh, Captain Picard wanted to fight a, a swashbuckler. So he hit the program, and the whole and he and and he would be in the movie. So that's another way to describe it. So an angel can come and show you visions. The angel can come in the form of a dream. The vision could be outside of you. You don't have to be in a trance. You can be in a trance with your eyes open. You can be in a trance with your eyes closed. You can be in REM sleep. But then sometimes the angel or the angels come, the three men that came to Abraham. He saw the plane. There was, he didn't see anything. All of a sudden, three men walked toward, toward him. Then later, in that, in that uh, account with Lot, there was two, two of the angels. Now, when Ariya, high priest Ariya, taught that, he said the, 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 the one angel was Yahweh Shai, and then you had two angels, could have been Michael and Gabriel. There's no, there's no scripture on that. That's just how he taught it. So it makes sense, but it doesn't say the, oh, the, the one in the middle, the, the one in the middle is Yahweh Shai. The one on the right is Michael, and, Michael, and the other one's uh, on the left is Uriel. It doesn't say all that. A lot of times you go into the scriptures, it just mentions the angel. In Revelation, it mentions the angel. The Lord told John, I will convey this uh, information to you through my angel, through a angel. Angel, I believe it's Revelation 19, attempted to bow down to an angel. And he said, Don't, do not bow to me. I am thy fellow brother. Just, I'm just merely quoting it. So, let me come back over here. Anyway, now when we say person, we don't mean human. We're not saying the Holy Spirit's a human. I mean, Jesus was incarnated. Person is a way to identify. And we say the same thing. What this, what, what vocab is saying, we say the same thing. If you, if you were to stop and listen, that they work together, but there's an order. Where you went off is, is that they're co-equal. Uh, as you would call a uh, triumvirate, 
three and one, or a uh, tetrarchy, four and one. Now, Dow's understanding of the Trinity, you don't hear him talk about it a lot about it. I feel like there are little folks that are murderers, but the Holy Spirit is a human. And most of them do not believe the Holy Spirit is an individual person, a, a distinct person in any way. Now, when we say person, we don't mean human. We're not saying the Holy Spirit is a human. I mean, Jesus was incarnated. Person is a way to identify a distinct personality. Now, Dow's understanding of the Trinity, you don't hear him talk about it a lot about it. I feel like there are little folks. And most of them do not believe the Holy Spirit is an individual person, a, a distinct person in any way. Now, when we say person, we don't mean human. We're not saying the Holy Spirit is a human. We are persons. However, you want to define the truth. Eternally exists as three distinct yet co-equal, co-eternal. Co I'm trying to get this sound bite right here. Prepare, bear me for a minute. Persons. However, you want to define the truth as long as it's Trinitarian and not moralism. They don't believe that. And that's because most of Israelites believe that Jesus Christ was a created being. And most of That's what I wanted. The Lord was a created being. And I'm going to prove that by scripture. I'm going to prove that by scripture. And then I'll close it. Um... Okay, let's go right here to uh, I thought I had another bear me for a minute. Um, you can start from the 13th verse. You can really start from the top. I'm going to go right to the uh, 15th verse. Who is the image of the invisible power? That's our Lord. The firstborn of every creature. Now it goes on to say, for by him all things were created, right? But he first had to be created. It said, who is, it's talking about the Lord, Yahweh Shai, who is the image of the invisible uh, 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 father, the, 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 the invisible God. This is the same thing that Philip asked the Lord in um, St. John 14 and 8. Show us the father and it, 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 it suffices us and we'll be satisfied with that. He said, uh, you've been this long with me and now and you don't know who I am. He said, he that have seen me have seen the father, meaning he, if the father came down, in other words, he, he came down in his father's image and likeness. It says, it says, who is the image and who is the image of the invisible part? Of Father, which is the God, God, Father, God, the firstborn of every creature. He's the firstborn of a baby is born. A baby is created in his mother's womb, right? The firstborn of every creature. And when he created him, he put him in charge of creating the universe. When you go to when you go to Saint John one and one, when you go to uh, uh, Genesis 1 and 1, it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Ask any question that, you'll get it wrong. The word there for God is Allah Hayim, which means gods. And then, and then the understanding is in John 
one and one because he he, he repeat, repeats what was said in Genesis 1. And he said he was a God. He was known as the word. I'm not going to go to it. It says, who is the image of the invisible power of God? We have made him the firstborn of every creature. So he was the first creature. He was cr Creature means created. And we know it's talking about the Lord, invisible, because he's in the spiritual realm. It says the firstborn, proto, let's break this, let's break this down. Protos, yeah, there's a word, a pro, prototype. Prototype is if you invent something, you're going to make the fir the, the, that first thing. It's a prototype. And it doesn't look all that pretty. You know, you, you had a, the first car would be considered a prototype. And as time went on, you made the car look better. We, we, we go from the, you know, Henry Ford's uh, first, first car. Not the Model, model T, it was something else. But he's famous for the Model T. And from the Model T, or the car before that, you have these cars now, which are nothing but computers with wheels on it. Com big, com complete, completely different. The Model T can't compete with a, a car today. Period. You had to get out to crank the 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 the, en the engine, and you could have broke broken your arm. It was a whole di the, it was a whole different car. So pro, proto or protos means first. It just means first. That's all it means. Prototype. First in time or place. Like the first thing created. Proto and tikto. to bring forth so first first a uh, firstborn is is the first to be brought forth let's come back over here let's go firstborn Protos tikto of every creature. The word here is G twenty nine thirty six. Thesis. The act of founding, establishing, building. When you build something, you start with the, with a brick, right, and mortar. Well, you got to make the brick first. So you start from uh, dust, sand, and you and you form a brick. Then you get mortar, and then you build the foundation. And before you know it, that brick becomes a house. Brick upon brick, mortar upon mortar, right? The act of creating, creation, creation, i.e., thing created of individual things, beings, a creature, a, a creation, anything created after a rabbinical usage by, the, by which a man converted from idolatry to Judaism was called. Yeah, that means new creature. Could you say you become a new creature, meaning you're Mind changes, your spirit changes. You're a different person. You could have been a stick-up kid or some hardcore guy that was in prison. Then you found, you know, you heard that story. You found Jesus and you're, you're a completely different man. The sum or aggregate of things created, institution, ordinances. 
So was the Lord created? You got the right, he was created. He was created, the firstborn, the first created of, of all creatures. And then he, he received the job of creating everything else. So I can't tell you, I can't, I can't tell you exactly what he did. I, I can't tell you if the most I pulled out a magic wand. He was in a laboratory, but he created him in whatever way in the spirit. Anyway, on to the next one. 